What's going on, everyone? It's Nick with Us vs. Herd. We're here with episode two of our podcast, and we have a special guest on here. His name is Ferris. You may know him as FC in our Discord, in our YouTube chat. Um, he's been around. He's I would say he's a UVH OG, one of the very first people, I would say, to come into the community, support the community, support me, and I definitely appreciate all that he has done for the VH fam answering questions, trading with us, and going through the good, the bad, and all of the above. And um, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, well, thank you, thank you. First of all, for you know, nice introduction. I really appreciate <laughs> that. I'm really happy to be here, and you know, on this, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to be part of UVH. We have, I know we have like to have our fun after market hours. I know, I know we get down to business when the market's open, and. Uh, yeah, ready to get right to it. Let's roll into it. So I thought it was right to have you on as like the first guest of the podcast series because you were my first and so far only guest on a Us vs. Heard live stream um, answering right. questions. And I find that uh, that was very beneficial for a lot of people um, because there's a lot of people that are have a lot of different skill ranges some are very experienced some are just started trading yesterday and some people have never heard of stocks or options before and i find that you were very relatable and to kind of give some background i talked to uh ferris about a year ago a little less than a ten, year ago ten months actually okay yeah, on so to, yeah to date. last december Right now, right now we broke all-time highs today, and last December we were kind of looking at a different scenario where we were at all-time highs and we were selling off like crazy. Um, That's um, right. So, you know, you you were starting off trading. You've been trading for a while, and you were coming off a red year, but you were working through it, going to positive. I mean, what has changed in the last ten months? Have you gone green? How have you, how's your trade mentality changed? What has shifted for you in terms of options trading? Okay, well, you know, I, let's run it back. Let's run it back to that that point real quick, just to like kind of give uh, give some background information. I think that's important here, and also just not to mention, you know, timing. Uh, so we actually, I was just scanning back before this, and I was I saw that we did that on December twenty eighth, actually, which is if I'm not mistaken, like. That, that big, big red day, that last one was Christmas Eve, or Christmas Eve might have been a half day. But mm-hmm. it was at some point before Christmas, because I remember the massive up day was the day after Christmas. It was December 26th. So, so this is this is now exactly 10 months from the day that we coincidentally did that. <laughs> and uh, that, at that point, like like you had said, yeah, no, I was, I was, what I was doing was I was combating the, 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 the October and November with how the markets just, just, you know, it basically got the, it was basically a rug pull, you know, I mean, I'm looking at mm-hmm. an ES chart right now, and, and, I mean, you can see, we got, we got crushed pretty hard, pretty hard, 27, eight, you know, we were like, up in 2800 area, and then, you know, that thing got crushed down to the low 2300, so, you know, that, at that, it was, that was the point when I had really gone red on the year, and was just like, yo, I need to change what I'm doing, like, I know about options. I've studied options. I know what they are, and and that's when I decided I need to use options to to kind of leverage, you know, and hedge hedge myself from. Well, you know, I did I did at the year did finish red though, you know, because mm-hmm. remember, as we talked about on that call or on that you know live stream, you know, things aren't going to work right away. So it's not like I just started trading options and I was like, oh, cool, okay, you know, reverse reverse all these losses and you know back to green. Yeah, that, it's that would not be like you had maybe. a million dollar account, did one trade, yeah, and you were exactly you were back where to I, green. <laughs> exactly, where I can just you know make literally one to one Amazon, you know, grab grab some Amazon calls, you know, buy the dip on Amazon, and, and I'm back to green, you know. That I mm-hmm. did that, that, which is funny because now in hindsight, you know, you could have easily done that, and you would have been quite profitable if you just had to just bought the dip on pretty much anything from the last time that we. But that, that's that's in hindsight, right? But sure. sure. The, the, the point the point being and the point I think you were trying to make was that I you know I found UVH actually it's interesting enough I don't know if you remember but uh, I told I had told you I was like I don't, I'm not actually in any other groups like, like most people like I don't want I don't want to throw a percentage out there but we get I think it's safe to say a majority 
of, of members are in other are in other groups. What, what do you think? Is that safe to say? Yeah, I mean, I think the majority of people, I mean, I don't think we're their first option. I don't think us versus herd was their first option, uh, mainly because, I mean, I would say that we're kind of on the smaller side and, um, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of traders out there for, for, for better or for worse. There's a lot of traders out there. You know? This is true. This is true. So I, so for me, my story goes as having to find you first. That's just what, that's just how, that's just how it rolled. That's how it played out. I found you first and I, that's just the you know direction I rolled. I didn't, I didn't want to be, and I, I, I also, you know, you remember I, I work in the chip industry as well at the time. So I, I also have, you know, that full time job grind. I know a lot of people mm-hmm. are, you know, doing that just to give more context for people who are listening. So it's not, I'm not a full time trader. I don't know. If people are going to just like oh, tune out now, like leave. <laughs> or, or people are going to be more intrigued, like, oh, okay, this guy has a job and, you know, he finds a way to still, you know, he doesn't make an excuse that he has a job and he can't trade. So I don't know. That's, that's for, well, that's from what for I what I find, like person, one of the so. things is, even if you were a full time trader, I think it's important for anybody, whether and even if you don't trade, even if you do work the nine to five, it's important for anybody. And I say this all the time, but it's important for anybody to develop multiple streams of income because if your job is ever taken away, if your income is ever taken away your livelihood is threatened in every way possible. But if you have multiple streams of income, options trading one, maybe you flip on Amazon, maybe you flip on eBay, maybe you do rental properties, whatever the case is, you have that you have that cushion so that way you can you can make it through tough times because there will be tough times in, in your future. So whether you have a full time job or not, I think it's important to develop multiple streams of income. The old heads, the OGs will say, "Stay ahead of the curve." Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm that's I'm you know I'm actually another coincidence. So my birthday isn't exactly at one month from today. So at that point, I'll be 27. Nice, happy birthday, happy early birthday. Yeah, yeah. So it's just funny, like, all these things are just like incremental. It's funny, just like the December 28th. Uh, thank you, by the way. Thank you. It's just like all these 28s, right? Like December 28th live stream. Today's October 28th. And then, uh, well, let's stay let's fun. stay inside. Hope we don't get struck by lightning. <laughs> I know, I know, I always do it. But but the 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 underlying story here is is really about you know just I think each person looks for a group and and you know, I I got lucky finding I maybe mean, not everybody. A lot of people do try to just I guess you know go solo lone wolf. But most most majority are going to look for a group and, and join set and join a couple. Uh, I got lucky and I just found found you first and was like, this is this is more than enough. This is great community. You know, and I guess I, like, as I said, I proved it, helped improve it, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know that. With all that being said, you know everybody comes to the table different reasons to trade. That's for sure. Everyone has their reasons, which which you know I'll t- touch on this real briefly as I kind of move on. Which you know could be good or bad. I know some people are possibly trading for the wrong reasons. You know, or some people are trade. It's trading isn't what they think it is. You know, we've talked about that before. Mm-hmm. You know, the cra- crazy high, unrealistic aspirations. It's, it's like you know, it's like don't want to tell them. It's it is it is possible. Don't get me wrong. Anything is possible. Like the craziest, highest aspirations are attainable in the market. It's just you know, how are you willing to put in the work to get there? Because it's not just clicking a few buttons and you're there. Mm-hmm. You know, we know that all too well. So, you know, moving along for I just want to include that because you know there are a lot of people. As you said, there's for better, for worse. There's so many people in trading. So I yeah, I mean, if you have a if you have a hundred dollar account, yeah. the chances of you being a millionaire in the next five years are pretty slim. You know, right. especially right. if you don't blow that first hundred dollars in the first couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, right. no, sure, sure. And then so, what that so, it's it's it's, it's cool. everybody. I think a lot of people that come, regardless of the reason, I think come and look for community. So it is it is awesome part of a good a great one appreciate and, uh, that you know and, yeah for sure and like within like you know and that's uh and that's how that's a, that is part of the reason to tie back in you know hope this totally this ties back in nicely but that does help how you know my my growth and my my shift so to being able to trade options successful in my opinion sure so how does it work with a full-time job how do how do you balance like the trading and your job at the same time because i mean obviously the market i know that you're in cali so your pacific time so 
you know, the yes. market's already three hours ahead of where you are at. So, you, I, you know, how does, I, how does, I, how does that work? Uh, being in I Cali, have the easy, I have the easy, but yet boring answer for you. And you know, that answer is you gotta do your homework at night, you gotta do your homework <laughs> at night and you have to keep it, you know, I can't, I can't trade every sector. I can't trade like everything. You know that, you know what I like. You're, you're one of the few people that actually knows like what I, how, what I like to trade in some of the setups. And so, well, we like a lot of the same setups, but you particularly know like what tickers I like to trade. You know, uh, I'm a big fan uh, of chips, memory sector, you know, and uh, that, it, to me, I think it's, it, I think that ties in with having the job too, is knowing what you're trading, that way you're not doing as much babysitting. Sure. You gotta, you gotta know how these things, how these things move. You gotta go, you gotta go, a lot of the time, even if it is a quick in and out, like before work, or, you know, or even on the clock. It's, you know, that's that's why we have the tools that we have. That's why we have mobile apps and we have, you know, different ways to close out positions when you're just on the fly. So do your do, do, do due diligence, do your DD, do your TA technical analysis at, uh, in the evening, late these hours right now. And uh, I, I think, I think it, it, anyone can do whatever they put their mind to. Sure. So, like, what, like, mentally... You know, we've all experienced losses. We've all experienced red months. We've all experienced red weeks. I mean, what in terms, like a mindset, what was like the major turning from you where you were like, okay, I can't do this anymore. You're at the, like, you're either like, okay, either I'm not good at this, I'm going to quit, or I'm going to push on and overcome. Like, what was your turning point? 30% when I was down 30% of my account. That was it. That was when I was just like, the, well, but that was it. That see, that's when I thought was it though, right? Mm-hmm. I think I've told you this story before. That's when I thought I was like, it's hit, you know, like if I go, if I go any deeper than this, like, you know, counts good as blown at that point. But that wasn't true. That wasn't true because I did go deeper, and I did get to fifty percent. I was down fifty percent. I was right fifty, and that's you know, that's when I had to take a step back. That's when I have to take a step back and do what every trader does. You know, every trader takes that break. But I think when I took a break, it was like really like, it was a real break. Like I was really just like really watching tentative, like, you know, very intuitively watching, studying the market for, you know, not even, I mean, you, you, I, I was, I was talking to you during this point too. Mm-hmm. Well, we can go back and, and, and watch. And, you know, that's me going through that phase, which is what I'm talking about right now, which is just like, you know, like, like I had barely started to recover, and then like it's literally like why like as like as we're doing the recording was part of the phase of when I had begun began to recover, and like I had thought that I'd become consistent, but I really added is what is going on there in that last week of that final week of 2018, mm-hmm. rolling into this year, and then that January when the market just like I mean I, it was just basically like clear to me right like I mean we we talked about it you and I talked about it I mean I can find. I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah. So I guess, I guess the question, the question is like, what is the turning point to overcome that? Because, um, you know, thinking back and as long as I've been doing this, um, in terms of having the community and working with everybody and trading with everybody, um, you know, there were a lot of people and I'm not going to name names or anything like that, but there were a lot of people who were making money left and right. And then when things got hard, they quit and they said, I'm done. I'm, I'm signing off. Goodbye. Never talk to me again. I'm done trading. I can't do this. But for, but for you, you said, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to do it. Like what made you continue doing? Why, why didn't you quit when things got hard? Why did you keep going? You know, it's crazy. You know, what, what, if, how, how old is your kid right now? Um, he's going to be five in January. <laughs> What if, what if I tell you that like he just like came in your office one day and just like drew you like an uptrend on a whiteboard like literally drew you like an uptrending like like at five years old just like drew you a chart like what like like imagine that and then like fast forward like twenty two years mm-hmm. that's me mm-hmm. so like that basically I was just like I know this too well I can't quit there's no reason to quit I have you know I'm not I'm completely you know, aware and and you know, of of what I'm doing, I'm completely aware of 
what, what what's going on. Like I'm completely aware that most people aren't going to just start off and be successful. I just all this just just mass awareness of and comprehensive knowledge just built over time. Just and so much. Just basically, I don't even want to say it, part of part of part of it is. It's the, the building of screen time. I knew that I was in that point where I just needed more, where I just needed more and more screen time, and I was just willing to bite mm-hmm. the bullet, and I still am willing to bite that bullet, and it's kind of just like a forever. I've kind of just accepted screen time as just this, like, infinite kind of, you know, you get what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like there's never yeah, enough of it. There's never, there's never enough screen time. I want all the screen time in the world, but, you know, we have to live life. <laughs> yeah well i mean the, nobody like that's what i think no one can predict the market you know what i mean right. so exactly. it's, even if you have like you, you ask warren buffett exactly. he's not going to know what's going to happen tomorrow i mean he might have a good hunch and he probably ha- you know he's got a good feel for things of course but he's not going to know if we're going to drop 500 points in the dow he, we're going to open up a thousand points that. higher you know that's the know. thing he didn't know Dow was going to hit 22k last december he didn't know that no i promise you that <laughs> oh so yeah, he had no idea. And then getting about now, now he's now being the man that he is. He loves to play the odds, and I'm sure that he has you know considerable stake in this this run back to 27k. Or sorry, excuse me, run to 27k mm-hmm. all time all time high. So uh, that you know it's kind of funny that you mentioned Buffett too because I I like to take a page from everyone's book. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, sure. I'm not like full. I'm not like. Like I, I'm very, uh, I'm very open to listening. I'm very open to different approaches. So the page from his book is, is, is just the simple, the simplest one. Just choose, you know, choose your sectors and and stick to those. I know a lot of people want to catch everything, you know. So you have, you have to be okay. You have to actually get to the point where you embrace the the, the your your winning and just be okay with with the fact that there's a few, you know thousand opportunities that are missed every day what do you think yeah, that's just yeah you have, a lot of people have to come to because i know it's hard in the beginning i know it's hard and it makes people uh, you know anxious so to speak like it, it literally it's just uh people it can, it can cost people some money actually yeah so i mean i say that all the time so like when we'll go back a little bit and when i was talking about people that you know they quit options trading because it got hard you know right. and i the thing is, I always, I always kind of picture, picture myself in when options trading is is easy, and I'm making money quickly, and I'm making money consistently. You always kind of in the back of your mind, always have to remember that's not going to continue. If it, if it's easy, it's not going to continue, and that's what sucks in a lot of traders that think, oh, anybody can do this, I can do this, and then when things get hard, they kind of don't think about. It's not that options trading is different or anything there's it's a different environment that we have to use a different strategy to to apply to the market that it is today the market changed over the last week or over the last month and the strategy that you were using is no longer working so what have you what are like some of the things that you've done to kind of shift strategy when you knew that hey this is not working you know i'm, I'm going down a path that i've had a couple red days back to back you know what do you do to kind of kind of change gears, change lanes, and get into the green zone. So you're, you're going to think this might sound crazy, but my reset mode for this, for this so far, and that's worked beautifully, is by the dip. That's been my reset. <laughs> so I have lit, no, 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 but you know what that means, right? You know, that, that can mean not trading for days at a time. Sure. If you go back and you look at the, I mean, you will see on the one year, there are plenty of, 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 red, of red candles, like day after day, is what I'm trying to say. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm looking at a bunch right now. I'm looking at a bunch of where I bought and you know potentially got burned and had to hold. But like, I was that's not that's why you don't play weekly expirations. So. so in terms of options trading, what are you like two years in now or a year and a half? Options trading, I'm about to hit. Yeah, I'm almost at two years. I'm soon in, in January. I'll be two. So like, what what are some of the things that were like, you know, we all have them where man, I can't believe I was living in ignorance. Like, what are some of the things that kind of changed your options trading style or, or strategy that, that curtain was lifted? Like, what, what were some of the things that you realized that you could do that you didn't before? Like, oh, if I only knew this before, I would have been more profitable. I would have been not, all right, maybe I wouldn't even been in that trade at all. 
you know? But honestly, playing the, uh, for me, it was, I put a lot of money into options, into stocks, weekly expiration that didn't move. That was, that always, I always took huge note of that where I was just like, you, you can't be putting money, you can't be playing same with expiration on a stock that's not going to like, like on, a, on like a Twitter, for example. That's just, you can't do that. It's just not, this mm-hmm. is in my book, that's unacceptable. So, and then another, another one that, that I put a lot of money into and didn't get results were I had to figure out how to properly play same day expiration mm-hmm. because that is a tricky one when you're new. <laughs> and, and I had definitely sunk, you know, more than I'd like into, into the, into, because I knew the potential was there and I'll admit I'm still, I mean, I'm, I, I wish I was a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent on same day expiration, mm-hmm. but I've, I've figured out the, the kind of, this is the, the, the recipe that you need, so to speak, on, on those. And, and, and with any, like any game, I'm always grateful for the games. Always, you know, it's... it's yeah, I mean, you brought up same-day expiration, and I find what's interesting with same-day expiration is, you know, yes, you can make pretty big returns pretty quickly. However, you can quickly go to zero, as many of us find out going, you know, trading day of expiration options. And I think that if if you don't understand the Greeks, like if you don't understand delta and theta and how all that stuff works together you're going to fail probably every single day trading day of expiration you may get lucky you know here and there but over the course of the year you're going to fail miserably if you don't take the the time probability is not in your favor you're right if if, if you don't understand the data and everything's accelerated on day of expiration and as time goes on i mean I mean, it's easy. Right. To, it's really easy to blow your account. I mean, I've seen there's Man. a lot of people that have come to me and like, man, I did some really stupid trades today. I was trading day of expiration, and you know that's why that's why they don't even let you open trades on Robinhood because they know all the people on there are just gambling their accounts to yeah. zero, and right. they're going to be liable for their margin calls. You know, because these right. people don't have the money. <laughs> you know, that's a hundred percent correct. And also, it ties in nicely to how I sometimes wasn't able to monitor as closely as I want to. Not you know, being that I'm not a full time trader. So, with that being said, you know that that definitely had to play into how you know the timing that I put on and took off the trades. You know, dealing with greed versus just you know being happy, thankful, and you know taking those wins over and over and over, and just being happy with. With you know, not of, of course, money was left on the table. Is my point. Of course, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, it's always so, gonna be. It's always gonna be on the table. Unless, I mean, is that left so much money on the table? I, I, I should be saying the market's rigged. I should be. I should be telling you the market's rigged right now. <laughs> That's how much money has been left on the table in 2019. I should be, you know, rant. Literally, I should be ranting about a rigged stock market. But you know, that's that's kind of like. If it's funny though that I even say that because that's almost like what how I saw the move kind of playing out in the first place, just being like, "Oh, these guys are going to get burned." Like I'm going to bet on that, and then it happens. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. So that's kind of my my two cents right there. In a nutshell, on same day expiration is kind of what I figured out. Is you just you, you know it's it's really kind of just I mean it's like anything else. It's like anything. I mean, is it, it's is it going to be an up day, down day? Or a flat day. There are three outcomes that's if we're looking at it super simplistically. Uh, and like right now, I don't think there's any same day expiration plays now. I mean, I know last week I had a crazy, crazy one on Amazon, but just to give you an example, right now, I think, I think, you know, I may be wrong, but this, for this week, the way things are looking, I, I don't, I don't know if we're going to, I mean, I mean, we'll see. We'll yeah, see I mean, we still got a lot of earnings plays left to go. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot to happen, but, um, you know, right now it's, it's kind of a slow game with, with the fed. I mean, we, we kind of know what's going to happen, but nothing's for sure. <laughs> you know, right. nothing's ever right. for sure. And, and I think, you know, um, one of the, I think the, one of the, I'm not going to say like controversies of mine is people don't understand really why I don't put positions on before earnings and it's something that I stopped doing because it directly impacted my P and L in a negative, in a negative way. Where it was better for me to make zero money than it was to play 
uh, earnings play, before, put a position on and hold through earnings. I mean, what do you what do you think? What's your stance on earnings oh, plays? Earning play, earnings play for me. Has, if you're gonna if you're gonna play it, 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 again, it can't be like you were gambling if you do that week. So let's just get that out of the way right now, right? So if you if it's this week, if it, just to be current, you know, and it's Facebook or Apple because I see they're reporting on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And you're playing this Friday, you know, which is first. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if you're playing November first expiration, you're gambling. That's, so that's my two. And then so that's so you have to have. There has to be a vision. There has to be a vision. Is my point. And there has to be. It has to be like, like this beyond stock is way too over, overbought. Like I'm gonna buy a 2020, you know, put on this and I'm gonna hold it through one, maybe even two earnings. That's mm-hmm. that's in my opinion how the proper way to do because you will make some serious money if you close your if you if you know if you're correct and you you know it ultimately does go in the direction that you're betting and and uh, you close out you you, you make you do make a, a large gain there especially because your expiration is way way out there right so you're gonna make a lot more money than someone who's just gambling anyway and playing playing the same the same week and then. It's a more strategic bet. If if you are wrong, you know maybe it sells off after. You just time is on your side, you know. As going back to those Greeks. Yeah, I mean, in terms of when, after thinking back at you know, and this kind of comes with experience too, because if you if you quit, you'll never know if you'll be successful, and that was just right. something I couldn't live with. So it's always I've always been, you know, if I stop doing something. But I, I enjoy doing it, and I think that I'm good at it. I believe that I'm good at it, or I believe that I can develop the sc- skills to be good at it. But if you quit, I couldn't personally live with myself knowing that I stopped, and I don't know what the end result would have been, right? And But what I'm looking at is, if I think about over the, the history of, like, what are some of my largest trades? What, How did I make the most money? Where did I how did those How did those plans come together? And... My best trades ever have always come from developing a plan, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, they weren't a sing, one single day trade. They were they were trades that I've held for a week, two weeks, or a month, or multiple months, um, and all that came from developing a plan, executing the plan, not day trading. Day trading, I mean, day trading is good if you want to make ten to thirty percent, and sure, you can have some big gainers, but overall like especially when we're like in a low volatility market that we're in right now like spy move 50 cents intraday i mean how much today i mean how much are you going to really be making you know there are some plays but you know i think people that are day trading get i think especially myself even you know kind of narrowing down that maybe day trading you're not going to make the 500 to a thousand percent consistently but if you do, let's say, like you were saying, like a beyond put for 2020 and you have, you know, it broke multiple support levels or whatever your plan is, you have the ability to make, you know, a couple of thousands percent, right? So um, for you, would you say you're more of a trader that's, you know, are you saying you're more of like, I think you're leaning more towards like a d- disciplined that you're willing to wait. You'll you'll put you'll put the five hundred or whatever in, but you're willing to wait it out till it kind of comes into your favor. Versus, hey, let's let's see if Amazon's up in the next hour, and I'm going to put five hundred bucks on that. You know, exactly because that goes that goes to a conversation that I know you've had before, which is kind of like respecting the 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 numbers on the screen, right? Because it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like like necessarily like we're putting that five hundred. Or whatever that option costs, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it, right? Because we're putting it down with the the intent of making a return on it, or somehow, you know, strategically, whether it's you know, you know, averaging down or cutting the loss quick, whatever, you know, whatever the 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 defensive move. So it doesn't feel, but like it. it, it you, we all know very well that that you know, capital deployed is capital deployed. And you have to be extremely cautious uh, before you know getting filled. I, I, I take getting filled pretty seriously. So uh, my my two cents on my two cents on that is definitely like yeah, be be patient, wait for it, 
and uh, like like I said, you know, I've had to sit on my hands, you know, multiple days in a row to kind of allow myself to reset and and kind of be able be able to to come back to come back in clear minded and uh, but always, I mean, like I, I always tell people this too, like if they're taking a break, like I tell them like, hey, like you know, I'm gonna send them a message and be like, hey, you know, like. Make sure you still keep an eye on things, you know. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not trading, you know, make, you know, check in, check in on, see what ES is doing, see what, see what the S and P is doing. You know, I have, I have a watch list. This is me, this is me personally. I have watch lists um, that I can just check really quick, like if I want to see, you know, healthcare or banks or chip stocks. Sure. So even if I'm not trading, I can just glance at my phone very quickly. And, yeah, uh, I think as a control. trader, it's important to even if you like you're not trading. Let's say you like you go on vacation. Like I went on vacation, yeah. or or even last winter, I took some time off around Thanksgiving, just kind of hang with the fam, take a break from trading, you know. Right. And good. it's always good to also, you mean, your best trades are when you know like the pulse of the market. I would kind of want to call it, you know, yeah. like if you kind of, un, it's kind of weird, but if you understand like a, how the market is moving. You know, you're going to be a little bit more successful than somebody else, you know. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to ask you is I find that I've, I, I meet two types of traders. There's the trader that looks at the stock price and trades the option under that in terms of profit target. So and then there's the the trader that looks for a certain percentage on that option contract. So um, let's say I'm trading a spy call and I might Let's say I'm, a, I'm my target's three three oh five, but the other options trader is like he doesn't really care if it goes to three oh five. Maybe he has a three oh five call, but he's looking for seventy five percent. So what? Care. Where's your? What's your profit? Like what? What? What are you ahead, looking I'm for? I'm gonna go ahead and say this on the record, Nick. I don't give a hoot about the 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 price of the underlying as long as I get my target on the option. I'm I'm in and out of there like a bandit. <laughs> so what is your what is your profit target on 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 the a typical low, contract? Low. I'm I'm fifty percent is great. People are here killing to make fifteen one five. So if I make five zero, mm-hmm. that's that's incredible. I don't I don't I mean you know what I mean like making like especially think about think about like the long game. Like if you can make like oh man fifty percent that's a dream to just make fifty percent return consistently always. Yeah, that's I mean I find that new traders get really the greedy, dream. and I think that you know if you think about it, I mean ten percent. If you just shot for ten percent as a new I trader, ten percenters all the time. I think just, it, just to back you up. <laughs> I I think if as a new trader, if you were to take just ten percent every time, you would be consistently growing your account versus taking a hundred percent one time and then taking twenty percent losses then after. You know, it's it's. I think people get some sort of fulfillment or something out of those big. Ga- I, I'm not really. Well, I feel it's sure a, mo- it a lot of greed. I think it's mostly yeah. mostly greed and it's emotional. Um, there's, there's an emotional tie to a um, big percentage gains. Well, not only that, when you're winning, you believe that you're going to keep winning. Right. And and that's, I think, I feel like, you know, for me, that's an issue where if I have a lot of green days in a row, you know, same with red days, if I have a lot of green way, red, uh, green days in a row, you believe those are going to continue. Now, if you have a lot of red days in a row, you also believe that's going to continue because that's your current trend. So you have to do something to change things. You know, you, you're, you're not going to have a green day every day. You're not going to have a red day every day. But what are you going to do to break yeah. this cycle if you want to break the cycle? Well, it's, what's funny enough, I mean, you know, it's actually, you know, what keeps me going mm-hmm. is looking at the one year or five year chart of ES. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll, always, I'm just like, you know, this. I, I just look at it and I'm like, this is, you know, this is fine. Like, what, or I, I, it, it resembles my, my portfolio very much so. And I'm like, you know, this isn't bad. If I keep this up for indefinitely, I'll be, you know, very, very, even my point is regardless of what ES does is my point. Sure. That's the people, like, I'm, so I want to make sure I'm being clear on that. I'm just saying regardless of what, you know, the S&P and Dow does, 
as long as my portfolio continues to resemble that, resemble that, you know, that's okay. That's fine. I'm going. I'm going up. My trajectory's up. You know, it's northeast. So, I agree. That's that's it. Doesn't matter just the pace. The pace is the pace is irrelevant. Don't be you know don't don't be uh don't be fooled by the by the the, the you know whatever people are watching. Um, yeah. I, I well, I mean, the know. slow I've the seen, slow turtle seen, wins the race. You know, that's right, kind of the, right, the right. expression. I've seen the crazy, exactly. The slow turtle. I've seen the crazy Reddit, you know, Wall Street bet. Sure. Uh, things in Discord <laughs> and, and stuff, and it's you know, it must be nice. You know, some of those gainers, I gotta say, it must be nice. Some of those, but uh, you know, until my account is big enough to where the capital deployed of those trades is only a couple percent. Then you know, then you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see those, those, yeah. those massive Wall Wall Street at Reddit, you know, R slash sure. Wall Street bet style. I'm not, but you know, but but that's what I'm saying though. But back to what I just said a minute ago, if my account, you know, continues on this trajectory indefinitely, then sure, you know, I can make, I can make those sizable, sizable, you know, fifteen thousand dollar wagers, and that's you know only a fraction, a very small percent of my account. That would be, that would be great to eventually get to that point. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people this. I mean, I've I've met a lot of millionaires over the course of my life, and I've I've never met a single one of them who has made it quick. And I guarantee the people that are, you know, they like Bloomberg just put out an article. You know, someone uh, I don't even remember what it was. Was it Beyond? Um, he had a seven hundred dollar trade turn into like a hundred thousand dollars. And oh, wow. I guarantee Bloomberg wrote about it. I was I was on Wall Street's best. Well, I can't believe. Bloomberg wrote about this, but they did. It must have been a slow news day or whatever. But they, I guarantee that person is going to take that $100,000 and try to make it a million. And most likely within three to six months, he's going to be back at $700 or even worse off. Kind of like when you win the lotto, if you look at the stats, I mean, how many of the people that won the lotto have actually kept it? And who is worse off now that they've won the lotto yeah. than... than That's ugly. Than they than the, than they were originally before, you know. So, right. um, you know, kind of be, before we sign off, do you have any advice for beginning traders who you know you're going into your second and third year now from where you started off? You know, you know, since we last talked, you know, sounds like you did a total 180. You know, definitely very proud of you, man, on, on how far you've come you. with with options and and just kind of seeing your trajectory in terms of you know what you've shown us. You know, do you have any advice, you know, beyond what we talked about with any beginner traders or even more experienced traders? I mean, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna just tell people relativity is probably the most important component of, that's right, important component, yeah, it is, of trading. It is. It's got to be, in my opinion, because like we were just talking about the last couple of minutes there, and that was what led me and pointed me to this direction is, you know, like it's about account size and those, you know, crazy, some of those crazy lotto style bets that you'll see. And, you know, people, and that, that's okay for people to do that. But at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's not, that's, that's not going to be the winning recipe at the end of the day. So, you know, keep relativity is important to, to every person's style. That's really at the end of the day, what this is all about. Finding, finding what works for you, finding your style. And, yeah, you know, making making bets that are feasible, making you know strategic you know s- strategic bets that are feasible relative to that person, whoever whoever that might be account, because uh, gotta preserve gotta renew whether you're new or whether you're new or or OG you're gonna agree with this you gotta preserve that capital mm-hmm. right otherwise you're not Absolutely. gonna have anything to trade with so uh, keep you know keep keep those bets relative and keep the, keep those gains relative as well to to your account size. That's going to be it for me. All right, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all you do. Guys, if you hit up F- FC, his name is FC in Discord or in our community, you know, he's very helpful, very knowledgeable, as you can see. You know, definitely appreciate your time. You know, as always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus herd.